Good morning, friends. Nice to see you again. This is Pastor Pete at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood. It's time for some coffee, some coffee and conversation. Got a brief, uh, just a brief presentation for you or a brief discussion with you today from Psalm 138, verse 6. So grab your coffee, open up your Bible, and let's take a look. By the way, it's the 31st of November. <laughs> Sorry about that, 2021. Pastor Pete from Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. Okay, here we go. Psalm 138.6. Uh, Though the Lord is on high, it says, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Psalm 138.6. God is on high. We know that, right? He deserves that. He, he, should, he But yet he pays attention to even to the ones that are at the bottom of the heap. Um, you know, this day, these days the news is just filled with one calamity, disaster, stressful, anxiety-producing moment after another. And I just wonder, when, when disaster is striking you, when terrible, difficult moments are striking you, uh, what do you do? Do you have an automatic response? Uh, um, when somebody makes a hurtful comment or there's some confusing situation going on, you know, where, where do you tend to go? Some people go for food, for comfort. I can admit that to doing that myself at times, going for food, for comfort. Um, some people will run to a certain friend who will say, don't worry, you're okay, you're always right, it's, all, it's always the other person's fault. Some people maybe find friends who say, what's going on, let's, let's discuss this. Some people go to exercise or into a book. Um, you know, it's becoming certainly much more popular these days to go to binge watching on television or just countless hours on these devices, you know, get, getting onto our social media and just trying to escape or watching video after video after video. Um, psychologists all have been calling these things for many years coping me mechanisms. These are tools. A, co a mechanism is a tool. And so a coping mechanism is a tool that's used to temporarily... Um, maybe help me or help you or help someone we know work through or deal with something that's troublesome. And so sometimes a coping mechanism can have a short-term positive effect, but it's really only that, it's short-term, and it's very superficial. It doesn't really get deep down into what's at the heart of a matter. And so I want to say this to you, that, you know, sometimes we need something deeper. We need something that's more lasting. We need, I, I'll just call it this way, uh, we need to learn how to lean into God. I, I had a friend in church the other day. We were praying uh, in small circles at the end of a service, and and uh, we were praying for each other, and, and a friend just came out and said, you know, you cannot lean into God too far. There's no limit to the amount of leaning into God you can do. And so while well, things feel hotter and harder and more challenging than ever before, just lean in further. It was such a good word of encouragement, one friend to another. I see it this day, these days. I see it, you know, among my own my peers, but also I have adult children and I have a teenage child. And they're struggling to cope with the pressures of everyday life like we never had to when I was younger. Um, maybe we thought it was bad then, but I see how difficult it is. And I also see them struggling with what's true purpose like. I see a huge generation of people being restless and searching, and they're upset uh, because their patterns of growing up have been modified and changed and even getting wisdom from parents or, you know, the truth is coming at them from so many different angles so fast that they don't always know what to believe and when, where to get information. Um, there's no normal anymore. And so, you know, maybe if that's the case for you or someone that you know, you might be able to look at that scripture we just saw and think of yourself as one of the lowly. Um, you know, I'm on the downs, I'm on the outs. But the good news is that God at the beginning of that says, he's on high, but he's paying attention to the lowly. He, he's there when you don't have the answer. Um, and the key to that is, I think, the key to understanding that you can lean into God is that we have to choose to lean into God. It's a choice that I make. I, I'm presented with this opportunity. Do I go get another cup of coffee? Do I go binge watch another show? Do I just spend countless hours on the phone? What do I do? No, I have to choose to lean into God. I have to choose to pay attention to His promises. I have to choose the constancy that is God rather than the changing tides and messages that are coming from all around us, especially other people's opinions of us. 
instead of going to some new coping mechanism or taking another Facebook quiz to find out, you know, what you'll be doing in 10 years or what your birthstone means about your personality or, um, I think really the key is to go to the one, the very one and only who truly knows your heart and is paying attention at all times. You know, um, you could think back to the very beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve had a very similar uh, sort of decision to make. They, they had a restlessness. They were in the garden. Um, they had everything right before, before them. They had a restlessness and they had a desire for more. And it's that desire that the serpent kind of poked and prodded and you know, but God had said it pretty clear. He said, look, you can spend each day with me walking in the cool. We can walk close together. We can have this close fellowship. Or you can choose everything else. But I'm telling you, God's saying to them, don't choose everything else. You can have everything in this garden, but not that fruit. They had a choice to make then. He wasn't telling them to choose, but he told them, this is what you can have. That's what you can't have. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go to Genesis 2. And three, you read that section of the Bible and you'll see how the whole story goes. The unfortunate news is that Adam and Eve chose the everything else instead of God. And so we have that choice again. We, it's come back to us. When we're facing difficult decisions and circumstances, we get to choose God if we wish to. We can choose. It's our decide, deciding that makes a difference there. God's ready for us. But we can choose Him versus choosing everything else. We can choose a relationship with God through Jesus and getting to know Him more. And that will be more valuable and more steady in our lives. Jesus Himself is praying this. as he's In John 17, 3, Jesus is, is, John's recording Jesus' high priestly prayer. In John 17, 3, Jesus says, This is eternal life, that they, He's speaking about us, His followers, would know you, God, the Father, the only true God, and that Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the prayer that God has is to know him. So I guess, you know, if we get down to, really get down to cases on this, leaning into God in our lives, in my life, in your life, means in the situations that he, we're in that are difficult, We've got to maybe allow the difficult to be real and not always look for an escape, not always look for a way out, not always look for protection from the harm, but but leaning into God in the midst of those difficult, terrible times is where we can get past comfortable to restful. If we take away the distractions, the earbuds and the screens and take those away and really let ourselves be quiet before God, take the sounds and the visuals all away and let ourselves be quiet before God, those times are when God can really refresh us, help us to be restful. A, a, a thing that I have taken to doing over the last number of years is before I go to bed at night, read at least a verse of scripture, try to get something into my mind it is about God. And just let that fill my consciousness as I am going to sleep. And let God be first on my mind. And then we have fellowship with Christ in that. So, um, you know, it can be really a beautiful thing. I mean, this is a hard thing, that way to think of this, but it can actually be in the middle of sorrow and in the middle of difficulty, in the middle of loss, in the middle of anxiety, in the middle of struggle. It can be really beautiful to compare the fact that that whole scenario that's playing out right now compared to Christ is an amazing contrast. Paul says this in Philippians, uh, third, third chapter in Philippians, verses 7, 8, and 10. He says, What things used to be gained for me, these things I now count as lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I might gain Christ, that I may know and experience him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. There's a whole lot packed into that verse. But basically he's saying, I had all these troubles. Christ also had troubles, but I've just let all of that go, because now I can know him. So the only way, Paul basically saying this, the only way to really cope with anything really at all and really make it through with peace is to lean on the Lord Jesus. 
is to make him your Lord and lean on him. And so it's a leaning into God that gives us the peace and the rest and the refreshing and the strength. He's far better than any other technique, far better than coffee. <laughs> you know, he's far better than, than my electronic you know, device. He's far better. And he's inviting us to lean into him. He's inviting us to learn from him. He says, take on my yoke. That is, get next to him and let him lead and teach us. If we just spend our time, especially praying, God, take away this difficulty. If we don't, in fact, have the difficult moments, we, we lose our need to be connected to God. We lose our need if we're always safe and happy and content. It's in these difficult moments when we say, God, strengthen us. Make us strong and courageous. Comfort us with the peace that passes understanding, but give us the courage to stand and the strength to walk. Then we'll know God better and we'll know Christ better. So today I'm praying um, for my family, for my friends. I'm praying that you will know God in a way that maybe you haven't before and that you'll stop, put aside all of the other distractions and all of the other coping mechanisms and just lean into him and let him speak back to you, your mind. You might feel lowly right now, but I see you and I'm here for you. Lean into me and I will encourage you and strengthen you for the journey ahead. I bless you today, friend, and I pray that you'll always learn learn to lean on Christ first and always. In Jesus' name now, amen.